Dr. Arup Nag is pioneering cutting-edge food innovations, including sustainable dairy alternatives, through his work with Ant Foods. This is all about plant-based product development. So plant-based cheese, as well as plant-based meat technologies. We want to bring a solution to this dairy industry. Better nutrition, better functionality, better testing. Arup is a really unique skill set. It's critical we have him leading this R&D. So he's got an uncanny kind of commercial bent. So he does an amazing job at translating that for our um, partners and customers. As the first food innovation manager at the Riddit Institute, Arup continues to drive food innovations and champion the commercialization of research. The only thing which I very much enjoy is solving critical problems, at the same time helping the New Zealand economy and minimizing the risk of total dependence on animal-based products. He gets through a truckload of work. I can see him being a serial entrepreneur. He wants to see New Zealand be successful. He is the core of this team. So this market is already there and growing at a rapid rate. That's why our team is very much focused into patenting those technologies. Emily McIsaac is leading a dairy revolution with Daisy Lab, using precision fermentation to make milk proteins without cows. Daisy Lab has developed a technology that can produce dairy identical proteins without cows. What's quite new is it being used for a bulk ingredient, like whey protein that goes into almost anything with a lower environmental and ethical cost. Emily's been absolutely pivotal to this journey. A great example of a young innovator. She is smart, she's grunty, she keeps pushing forward. Our investors can see the future of this technology. Emily has developed business skills alongside her molecular biology expertise and is driving the commercialization of her research as Daisy Labs COO. The future's not milk. We don't currently export milk, we export proteins, and we can continue to export those exact proteins just produced in a different way. Well, Emily's definitely uh, now seen as an expert. She's got this perfect mix of clever scientist and the relentless entrepreneur. Dr. Jack Chen has invented a greener way to make surfactants using wood pulp, leading to startup company Sphelos. We found a way to combine cellulose and plant-based oils, produce sustainable and biodegradable surfactants that don't rely on fossil fuels. Surfactants are normally made from petrochem, and Jack's figured out a way of making them from waste pine chips. Its main application is in a detergent, but it's also used in cosmetics, foods and industrial processes. Jack is a beast when it comes to work ethic. He brings that nice mix of the super strong work ethic, but being really approachable at the same time. Sphelos spun out in 2024 to take its technology from the lab to full-scale production and is now seeking venture capital to grow. Commercialization of Sphelos will help to diversify New Zealand's open paper industry. As this surfactants are a 40 to $50 billion industry, if we are able to even take a small piece of that pie, it will be of huge economic benefits to New Zealand. They're building a whole platform technology to deliver a whole bunch of applications that change the world. What I'd like to be is a champion of commercialization for AUT and help with the translation of research into new startups. Blending science with traditional medicine, Cynthia Hunefeld is developing patented botanical drugs to tackle major health challenges. I've been working on botanical drug development, fascinated by the way that plants defend themselves, harness these defense compounds to produce novel patented botanical drugs. This is focused on the treatment of inflammation. The rigor of the research, number one, is very important. Huge credit to Cynthia, that tenacity never letting up. I think what really stood out is the comparison of the botanical drug to the single active ingredients in the product. 35 times better than West, you know, one of those yeah. defining moments, I think. 
In just two years since first investment, Avite Biotechnology has developed two multi-target drug candidates, secured three patents, and started clinical trials. I think the funding that Cynthia has amassed is really quite phenomenal as well. I love problem solving. I see every problem as a new challenge. My driving factor is better treatment outcomes. Expanding the medicine's toolbox, bring the best of both worlds together. 